Hello again, I am The Video Geek, and today I'll be looking at the ABIC KT7 RAID motherboard modification. This of course is a voltage modification using um, a 15K ohm resistor in my case. And remember folks, these videos are completely unedited, and these are only my opinions. So let's now start and look at exactly what I did to modify the KT7 RAID motherboard to get it to 2.12 volts. Okay, the first step in doing this modification is to try and find or buy a 15K ohm resistor. In my case, I had a few power supplies, AT power supplies, kicking around, which were basically junk. So I used a resistor color code to identify the 15K ohm resistor. Now, the other thing you can do, of course, is use an ohm meter to and go through each of these resistors and find one which is between 15 and 20 K ohm. Every resistor will have a tolerance level usually between 5 to 2 percent. So you can use this. This of course if you have anything kicking around, any anything that has resistors on you can check this way and uh, it would be a, basically a free resistor. Now I'm going to show you the resistor which I used and I'm going to show you what I did and how I actually was sure to make it that it was uh, 15 K ohms. Okay this is a digital multimeter from uh, Canadian Tire. You can pick up these anywhere at any kind of electronics uh, store and they're only like 20 bucks maybe or 20 or 30 dollars good thing to have if you're doing these kind of things now what I've done here is I've set my meter to 20k I know it's not going to be any more than 15 to 17 or 18k this is the resistor I'm looking for now I have a resistor here and this is the one identical to the one which I used and this the color code on this one is brown gray orange and gold and if you refer to the resistor color table you'll be able to identify that this one is 15k ohm now if I do what I'm going to do here is just touch the both ends on this resistor and you can see that it's around 17 K ohms this resistor <clears throat> so this is fine to use and this is exactly the one that I used to reach two point one two volts so let's now take a look and see the soldering job I did inside of the computer system okay the resistor of course is the same one and what I did do is I soldered two pieces of wire on either end of the resistor which would basically give it the length to be able to connect to the motherboard as I wanted it to. And I just used regular solder and actually a regular soldering iron. And I can't stress enough, this is a very, very delicate operation. You certainly have to take your time, be very patient, and be very, very careful. Because uh, these standard irons are 45 watts usually, but very, very hot and usually the mid, uh, the tip is very large so you have to be again extremely careful um, careful certainly not to touch anything else on the motherboard or any other cables you might have if you are doing it with the case 
and with everything else connected. I would recommend actually removing your motherboard and doing this with just just the motherboard itself so you can get in uh, very easily, rest your hand, and be able to do this job correctly. You probably cannot see the actual connections that I've connected it to, but if you look at your KT7 RAID motherboard, you'll see that this connection is quite simple compared to this connection. This is connected to the BC153 and it's connected to the upper which is the one that's not the one closest to the AGP slot it's the one that's up from the OTP slot again if I zoom out you'll see exactly where the placement of this is I wanted to try and make this job as clear as I possibly can because when I was doing it I did and I did have some confusion as to which one to connect this to and I tried a few and I did it wrong I did not screw up anything but and then I finally uh, was speaking to a friend and he mentioned to me which one to connect it to exactly and it did work fine at that point and again I am at 2.12 volts so let's now have a look at the BIOS and see exactly what I'm speaking of when I'm referring to 2.12 volts. Okay, this is the uh, BIOS. And what I have it set at now is 1.775. Now this translates to 2.12. Zero two two three volts, and to change this to the maximum, I would go into the soft menu three setup, and within here, I would just max the voltage up here. Now, if I change it here, you'll note that it will not reflect in here until I save it. Now you can see that the voltage is at 2.12 volts. This, I did get the system at uh, 1070, but it was not stable, even at the highest voltage. What I've settled on is using 2.02 or 3 volts and using 1040, so uh, 1.04 gigahertz, which is not bad for a Duron 800 CPU. Here's another look at the connections which were made. Again, the connection down at the bottom is to BC153. And as you can see up at the top, it's to the left, just to the left of the heat sink and fan on the motherboard. And something you should probably do, just to be safe, is cover up the resistor with electric tape or electric shrink. So that's about it. It's very, it's a very quick job if you take your time, and um, it'll be a lot quicker if you do take your time. And just make sure and be very steady and cautious uh, when you do this job, because again, it is kind of tricky. And if you are a little bit timid about doing this, I would stay away from doing it because, again, it's it's not for the uh, faint of heart in doing this. It's quite a tricky operation. In my case. I did have this Duron 800 at 1030 at 1 1.8, well actually 1.95 without using the resistor. So I didn't get much of a huge performance out of this chip with the voltage mod. However, it's a good thing to do for the simple fact that if you upgrade and get a T-Bird 1 GHz or a 1.1 GHz T-Bird, then I'm sure this modification would be extremely handy in getting above the 1.95 volt mark. 
That's a very, very inexpensive modification. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and I am The Video Geek. Please visit us at www.thevideogeek.com. Next week, I'll have another video.